Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Steve Lepsock, and I'm a Colorado State Representative and a candidate for Colorado State Treasurer. Today, we're going to be talking about the false allegations made by State Representative Faith Winter against me. Most of you probably are aware by now, it's been reported and reported accurately that I passed a polygraph test regarding Faith Winter's false allegations. And so the reason why I had to take a polygraph test is because I waited 26 days after Speaker Duran stated that an outside independent person was being appointed to investigate and to um, fact find. After waiting 26 days without hearing from the fact finder, I decided I needed to get my story out. The false allegation, the, the, all, all the allegations are false and I'm willing to do a polygraph on every single false allegation. Any questions? Bente, since you broke the story on November 10th, you get the first question. Um, how were the questions selected that you publicly released? Okay, well, first, um, I, I, um, there was an interview process and um, the examiner asked me questions about um, the allegations and obviously the allegations have been in the press for a number of weeks and um, the f uh, and so I answered um, three questions the three main questions four questions total but three main questions so Faith Winter lied and she said first and you can go back in the presses uh, can go back and look at the on-camera interviews. Faith Winter stated that, number one, I attempted to touch her elbow or arm. That's on the record. Faith Winter lied and said that I did touch or grab her arm. That's on the record. And now Faith Winter is going so far as saying that I touched her buttocks. All of those things are not true. They're all lies. And so, obviously, the three main questions that need to be asked, both of myself and Faith Winter. Bente, I would ask Faith Winter why she lied. Because I told the truth. I have a polygraph. Here's the polygraph results. And on the, po the three first questions of the polygraph was, did you attempt to touch Faith Winter's arm? I answered no. And that's the truth. The second question was, um, if I remember right, um, uh, did you grab or touch her arm or elbow? And I did not do that. And finally, um, most recently, Faith has made an accusation and a false allegation that I touched her buttocks. And that's not true. And that was the third question, Bente and I passed all three questions. So if I'm telling the truth, then someone has to be lying. So I would encourage you, Bente, since you broke the story, to go back to Faith Winter and ask her if she's willing to take a polygraph test on those three questions. Uh, next question. Representative. Yes. How much did this cost? Who paid for this? And at the end of the day, isn't this kind of moot because any decisions about your future will be determined by House leadership? Well, first, um, I paid for the, the polygraph. Uh, how much did it cost? $350. Um, and the reason why I had to take a, po a polygraph test and the reason why I have to get my story out this way is because I've waited patiently for weeks. I waited 26 days for the fact finder, the quote unquote investigator that Chrysanta Duran appointed, to call me or send an introductory email. To this moment, I have not received an introductory email from the supposed fact finder. Why is that? Why am I not afforded my due process? 
Why Next you, question. Why do you think, Steve, that you, at least, at the very least, Democrats seem to throw you to the wolves right away? They called for your resignation. They, it's now an effort by one representative that if you show up here next month, they're going to take efforts to expel you. Why do you think you don't seem to have any friends in the General Assembly? Well, I think you need to ask Matt Gray why within 49 minutes, I think Bente's story broke at 11 a.m. on November 10th. Within 49 minutes, and I have the text if anybody would like to see it, at 10, at 11.49 a.m., Matt Gray texted me and asked for my resignation. So I would ask you, Joe, go ask Matt Gray why he's doing this, because I, I don't know. You asked, Next question. In, in your press release, you insinuate there are political motivations behind all of this. Are you going to lay out what you think those political motivations are? I, I am going to um, release I'm going to release to the press later on this afternoon my complete story because I haven't even had an opportunity to tell the investigator or the so-called fact finder. Evidently the fact finder has only been fact finding on one side because I haven't even received an email. Does anybody think that that's appropriate? That on November 15th, I re received an email from Chrysanta Duran, the speaker, stating that she was going to appoint a person to do the fact finding. 26 days later, I took the uh, polygraph test on December 11th. 26 days later, and I hadn't even received an introductory email from the fact finder. So does that sound like due process to you, Chris? It doesn't sound like due process to me. So are you going to release both her complaint and your response? Um, I'll release my response. Um, I need to consult with someone to see if I should release her um, false accusation that she made um, to the, um, the speaker. Because it's, the, the story has changed. The story's been attempted to touch her elbow and arm. And then it was, I grabbed her arm, but I didn't. That's false. Both of those are false. I didn't attempt to touch her arm. I didn't touch her arm. I didn't grab her arm. And now, after all this time, after going to Bente with this breaking story, and the Denver Post and others, and lying to Colorado, lying, Faith Winter lied, and made false allegations against a sitting member of the Colorado House. Now her allegations include that I touched her buttocks. So which one is it? I had a question about someone. Someone, uh, any other questions before yeah, we get can, to the second question? Can you question? answer to those who are gonna be skeptical because you paid for this polygraph? What would you say to those who say, we're not sure this is valid? You can check out the credibility of this company um, the examiner is a professional polygraph examiner with over 4,000 exams um, that he's conducted in Colorado. You can do research on your own and see that it's, it's legitimate. Anytime someone goes to take a polygraph test, someone has to pay for it, right? And so I'm not going to ask the people of Colorado to pay for it. So I paid for it out of my own pocket. Why, Next why question. Why did you seem to suggest in your initial response when this story first came out that, yeah, I'd had a lot of drinks, and you, you suggested that your memory of the whole thing was not intact, and yet now you're giving us a patent no to each of these answers in a polygraph test? Well, first, let me remind you, my first official press release on November 10th, after the allegations, after the false allegations first came out, my main ask was, and if you can go to Steve Lebsock for Colorado.com and look at my press release on November 10th. And my press release included in part asking the false accusers to please make a formal complaint with the legislature. And the reason why is because I knew the stories would change. And I knew they were lies. And the stories, in fact, have been changing. 
What I found out during this process is when someone like me is falsely accused, you really don't know what to do. You're scared, but you know all the allegations. All the allegations are false. Every single sexual harassment allegation that has been in the press and been um, submitted formally in a formal complaint have been false. And I'm willing to take a polygraph on every single accuser who comes forward and submits a formal complaint. And you also apologized, though. So what were you no. apologizing for? And are you taking it back now if you're calling her a No, lawyer? I'm not. I, you know, I wanted to be, like I said, when you're first accused of something and you know you didn't do it, it's, it's scary. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to think. You don't know who your friends are. And I really was looking deep inside of me. And I, I wanted to apologize for anything that they might have, that might have offended them. I really didn't know what to do. I don't have a big staff like the governor. I have a, a part-time um, aide. I don't have a big staff to write press releases. You know, it's just me. And so I, I hope that answers your question. You can have a follow-up if, if it doesn't, because I, when the news first broke, I didn't know how to, to, to act. I didn't know how to react because I knew the, they were false. But I've seen in the past recently when men who have been accused fight back initially really strong, there's a huge pushback. And so I was trying to be as respectful as possible to the accusers and to the process. And that's the reason why I asked them to please submit a formal complaint. And so I wasn't even going to go to the press. My intention was not to go get a polygraph, but because I have not been even interviewed I have not received an introductory email from the so-called fact finder. I knew that I had to do something, and so that's the reason why I scheduled the, the, the polygraph to start telling the, my side of the story. And frankly, why don't you ask Faith Winter to take a polygraph test and, and ask her if she's willing to have the, the, the examiner ask the same questions I was asked. Someone has to be lying. We have a polygraph test that shows that I'm telling the truth. So someone has to be lying, and it's not me. You're accusing her of changing her story, and yet your story has changed, apparently, because your initial story was, I had some drinks, I don't remember all of the details, but you offered an apology, and now you're saying, no, actually, patently, all of these things are false, and she's lying. That those, aren't, those aren't different in your mind? Faith Winter stated that falsely that I attempted to touch her arm. That's false. The polygraph test results prove that I'm telling the truth. So if I'm telling the truth, that means she's lying. Second question of the polygraph test. So let me look to make sure I get this right because I want to be accurate. The first question was, did you attempt to touch Faith's arm? And that was a lie, and I passed the polygraph test. The second question is, did you grab Faith's arm, including her elbow? And I answered no, and that was the truth. I'm telling the truth, and the polygraph test proves it. But if you remembered it clearly, and you're now denying it and saying it's patently false, why didn't you just initially say, this is false, these accusations are false, and I'm sorry if I offended somebody. I, That's not what you said. Yeah, as I stated before, when you're, when, what I found out through this process, and I didn't really fully comprehend this until you're actually in the situation, when you're accused of doing something that you know you didn't do, and you're b between a rock and a hard place, you don't know how to respond. The first thing that came to my mind is I wanted to be thoughtful and sensitive towards the accusers. And obviously that hasn't worked because the accusers' stories have changed, but they are still false. Do you retract your apology? No, I don't think I'm going to retract my apology because um, if I have offended anyone in any way, um, I'm sorry about that. But 
one thing for sure is I did not sexually harass anyone ever. So I mean, there are and quick follow up. There are nine quick follow up in your next, Chris. You're, you're just a quick follow up. As you know, the session's coming up in a few weeks. Where will you be on the first day of session? Oh, I'm going to be um, fulfilling my obligation as a state representative, and I will be here representing my constituents like I've always done. Yes, Chris. The initial report, there were nine people who were making allegations against you, three of which went public, two of which have done formal complaints. Um, there were people who backed up her story who were present. How is it that that's you not say that's not accurate? There were people at the party that have said publicly that they did not witness any sexual harassment and did that. not witness um, me touching her. So we're in a crowded bar, right? And she's accusing me of grabbing her buttocks, and I just passed a polygraph test. So my question, though, is: all these people are working in concert. My, my full statement about a number of motives will come out this afternoon. Unfortunately, Chris, it's almost all of this is politically motivated. And there are people who have been complicit. And that's all I can say at this point. But those folks who know me really well here at the Capitol know that I don't toe the party line. I vote my conscience is what's best for Coloradoans every single time. And you know what, Chris? That's upset a few folks around the Capitol. The establishment here in the Democratic Party have, have been offended, frankly, by some of my good votes. So what, what did you do in the encounter that night? Can I have your version of events? Because you, if you're allowing the apology to stand and you met with the speaker afterwards and agreed that I was going to change some of my behavior about alcohol and, and move, we'll all move forward, what was all that about? What, what do you feel warranted I, any sort of response? Like I, like I said, when you're falsely accused, you don't know what to do, and I realize that now. I didn't fully realize that until you're actually falsely accused. And it's hard to react. You don't know how exactly to react. But I would ask the speaker, why is it that the fact finder has not contacted me? I, I want. I want to tell. Issue. I want to tell my side of the story. And so, next question. One more question. I, I I, the other, the other concerns and allegation are about vulgar language and sexual things you said you would do to her. Then you also mentioned Holly Terry in your statement. What about the questions pertaining to the vulgar language, the sexual alleged conversation, and then the things you said to Holly Terry? Are those questions going to be released? Did you answer questions on those allegations? I. I answered truthfully um, questions regarding Holly Terry's false allegations and I'll be um, allowing the press to look at those in the future and but there there's other... yeah so I, I'm willing to take a polygraph test on any of the false allegations all the allegations are false and I'm willing to take a polygraph test on any question because they're all false. If you keep on saying false right allegations, now? does that mean some of the allegations are true? No. Do you want to take a polygraph on those? No, I'm willing to take a polygraph on any accusation made against me, whether it be for sexual harassment or harassment. In anyone who files a formal anyone who files a formal complaint, I'm willing to take a polygraph test on. So Representative so, yes, next released, question. she responded to this, and she said one thing I wish he would have been asked is, did you ask Faith five times to go have sex with you? No, that's false. That's a lie. So let me ask you a question. If Faith is willing, willing to lie about these three questions, Faith, ask Faith Winter why she lied, because I'm telling the truth. The polygraph shows that I'm telling the truth. I didn't touch her buttocks. I didn't attempt to touch her arm, and I didn't grab her arm. If those things are true, and they are, and the polygraph test proves it, ask Faith Winter why she's lying. But she's saying that question should have been in the test. So you're, How um, many questions did you answer? Yeah. Just these? Yes, the, the four questions that you see are the only questions that the examiner, I, I'm not a polygraph examiner, and so um, uh, 
before the inter or there's a professional interview before you take the polygraph and he explained to me that he after he interviewed me that he was going to ask the most pertinent questions and I'm assuming that the 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 three things that needed to be asked were the three most egregious false allegations and that's did you attempt to touch your arm did you grab her arm or elbow and did you touch her buttocks and and it's all of those things are false Which they're lies and so so I'm, I'm not a polygraph examiner and so you're gonna have to ask the um, other polygraph examiners or ask the industry what, what their um, you method be open, method open to more questions um, I'll be open to more questions at some of the time, but the polygraph, polygraph yeah. questions. If I go by a polygraph exam for you, will you come and take it? I believe that I've passed the three most pertinent questions. So no more polygraph the, the most, questions. No, yes. I, I, any formal, I've already stated this, Joe, any additional formal complaints that are made against me, I will take a polygraph test on any one of them and I will pass them because I'm telling the truth. And so thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies when, and gentlemen. When, when are we gonna hear from you next then? Um, uh, I'll, I'll be in touch. Um, uh, thank you very much. Is, if the legislature is not meeting tomorrow, would you have held this news event? Because the legislature is meeting tomorrow to discuss sexual harassment. And I'm just questioning your timing. Well, Monday was um, when I uh, participated in and passed the polygraph test. Right. And so this is Thursday, and so I, I wanted to start getting um, because Christmas and New Year's is coming up, but right? And so I wanted to. Did not prompt any of this. Uh, I took the polygraph test on Monday, and this was the first opportunity I had to to uh, have a press conference. What Thank you very much. This is also a gentlemen. summary. Are you going to release the full results? Why won't you give your political story on camera?